Hello and welcome to a very special edition of A Closer Look. It is the postseason preview show. Just a few hours ago, the coaches in our area uh, did the drawings. They placed their team on a bracket and they know who plays who at least to get started. We're going to share all of that with you. Sean Boley and myself, Mark Miller, will have some of the brackets. But to get us going with Division I, Mark Schein and Nick Berkey. Guys? And thanks, Mark. We appreciate it. Mark Shine, Nick Berkey here. Nick, we have a chance to look at the bracket sheet from Division I. Now, there are 17 teams in this bracket, so we're going to put up the bottom half of it, and when we put that bottom half up, you'll see why. It has Lima Sr. and Finley both in it. The top half of the bracket, though, interestingly enough, Nick, very quickly, St. Francis and Toledo St. John's, two of the better teams in the area, they both went to the top. Yeah, two of the better teams. I'm a bit, I'm a bit surprised by that, that they're going at each other that early. I'm thinking maybe it's more of a convenience as far as travel, with it being played at Toledo Central Catholic. It might be the reason why they're doing that, going that route. The Lima Senior bracket will play at Foss Story, and you can kind of see that bracket. The other thing we noticed and see Lima Senior wait down near the bottom and Finley and Ashland in the middle there. The other thing we noticed, Nick, is there are 17 teams in the bracket and 14 teams have a winning record. 14 teams with a winning record. This part of the bracket, all eight teams have a winning record going into the tournament draw. It's almost unprecedented in that fact. And, and just looking at it, I'm seeing Finley and Lima Senior potential that, that rematch. They've played each other a couple times here and, and uh, I'd like to see that, that action again, if possible. Yeah, you can kind of see that the, the top-seeded team is th number three, Bowser, in here. Of course, they had an issue, issue this week. We'll see how they get punished with that and kids they lose and so on, things like that. We'll see how that plays out. But, you know, Finlay, 14-6, and six, Ashland's 14-5, and five, Lima Senior's 13-6, and six, Wait 12-7. and seven. We might well see those teams match up somewhere down the line. I think you're absolutely right. Just thought this is, is very interesting to see the records. Very interesting. Mark, why don't you go back and take a look at the Division II bracket then? All right, we'll do. This is the Ohio Northern District. And the number one seed, Ottawa Glandorf, they will start off in the Paulding sectional. Number two seed was Upper Sandusky. They're 20 and 0. Sean, you might comment that they just lost an important player. Wapak, number three, went with Upper Sandusky at Lima Senior. Elida got the four seed there with OG in the Paulding uh, sectional. This is a WBL sectional. All 10 teams plus Brian and Upper Sandusky. Yeah, one thing that stands out for me right away, you have three of the top ten teams in this district with Upper Sandusky, ranked number two. You have OG, who just beat Walpock, who's number five, and Walpock's number eight in the state. So that's really what stands out. But as you mentioned, Upper Sandusky just lost their starting point guard to an injury, averaging about 20 points per game. So that's really going to hurt Upper Sandusky. And really, Walpock, the number three seed, jumped up on that top bracket. Walpock has multiple players that can be the leading scorer per game. And um, so that's going to be an interesting matchup. I would imagine that Walpock's going to be out of that um, sectional into the uh, district finals, probably against OG. Um, they have two big guys, Kaufman and Diebel, right in the middle. Um, that's where their strong point is if you're OG, and they pride themselves, to Coach McLaughlin, with the defense as well. Well, you, anytime you've got a 20-0 and 0 team and rank very highly in the state, everybody should try to stay away from them. Mm -hmm. But with the level of competition played there as opposed to the WBL, not so much afraid of the upper Sandusky, and then you lose a great point guard, and that's why some teams are trying to jump up there and try to get them. We're going to take a great, uh, quick break. Our analysis is sponsored by Frickers and Van Wert. We're going to come back and go to Division Three. We'll be right back. Welcome back to A Closer Look, the postseason preview show presented by Leifeld Welding. Sean and I now have Division Three, the Napoleon District. Part of it's played at Defiance. The other sectionals played at Wasion. The number one seed at the top, Liberty Benton, 16 and three. Number two seed, Archbold, out of our area. Don't know a lot about them. The number three seed, Van Buren. I'm sure it was very close whether they were going to get to two or the three. Interest, interestingly enough, they decided to go with Liberty Benton. And the four seed is Elmwood. They will be at the bottom in the Wasion district uh, sectional. What do you see in this district, Sean? Yeah, really it's the defiance sectional piece of it with the uh, Van Buren, the three seed jumping up, as you mentioned, onto the Liberty Bet, and those two teams battled in the regular season. In overtime, Van Buren was able to get the win by four points. Uh, we all know Van Buren's led by Master Lasco, the University of Finley commit. Uh, Van Buren, well-coached team. They wanted to take another opportunity against Liberty Benton, so I'm not surprised at all yep. with them jumping on Liberty Benton. Yeah, I think that's true. Uh, they know each other, and Master Lasco is such a fine individual player that if you can put a lot of attention on him and make somebody else step up and score, maybe that increases your chances. Plus, Van Buren is much healthier now than they were right. when they have played at first. They got the football injury back. They had foul trouble that night. All of those things point toward them thinking maybe, even though Liberty Benton's a really, really fine team, we might be able to get them this time. All right, the Division Three Lima Senior District. Let's take it over to Mark and Nick. 
Okay, Nick, let's take a look at this Lima Senior Division Three district. It starts at St. Mary's High School, where the number two seed Spencerville will match up with the winner of Jefferson and Lima Central Catholic. And then Marion Local and Allen East also in the top bracket here. If we look at this, we know that Spencerville will play Jefferson very soon for the league championship, or at least a piece of the league championship. And Mary Local sitting down there, and I know you're an ex-flyer. Look like it's in pretty good shape in this particular bracket. Well, I, I look at that Spencerville-Jefferson matchup first. I would assume both teams going into this weekend's turn action being very plain, very vanilla. And you can certainly use it as a motivator either way coming out of that. You find some ways to be successful against yeah. a team, whoever comes off on top in the regular season, use that in a tournament. And uh, certainly that tournament game is no given. I like the Flyers when I looked at this entire match up and they're the entire 16 team or the the entire district as my dark horse in this group a team that started late because of success with football a lot of athletes on the floor uh, a team that uh, plays that that nba type schedule right. where so many games in such a short time i think they might be get healthy and be ready for a tournament run well, mary local just lost to spencerville by a couple but both teams came off big conference games the night before this will be a little bit different situation let's go down to the bottom bracket which is at elida high school the number one seed wayne trace is here you can see they're going to get the winner of parkway and riverdale carries down there as well Coldwater and Bluffton, they're both, Coldwater's 9 and 10, Bluffton's 10 and 9. This really looks like Wayne Trace's district right here. It absolutely looks like Wayne Trace's district. I, but I, I'm interested to see what, what Coldwater is able to do. Similar stories, Mary Local with a late start because of football. And um, see, I wonder how they match up with Kerry. But, but certainly Wayne Trace is the obvious favorite in this group. Yeah, Kerry comes in at 12 and 7. We're going to take another break on the postseason preview show sponsored by Frickers. We'll take another break and we'll come back and look at the Division Four brackets after this. Welcome back to Postseason Preview Shows presented by Latefeld Welding. Now we move to Division 4. Sean and I have the Liberty Benton District. Sectionals played at Riverdale and at Lakota. And these are, are a lot of teams that are on our northern periphery. Uh, only a few teams that we cover on a regular basis. Macomb, Arlington, and Van Loo in our area. Sean, what do you see about this? We've got the all four seeds other than Arlington. The top three seeds are teams from outside our area. Yeah, really thing that stands out is you had 13 teams. Three of those teams have winning records, and obviously those three teams went one, two, three. And outside of that, you have six teams out of the 13 in this district have only five wins or less. Wow. Um, so really, it's really top heavy as far as the one, two, three seeds. Also, you look at a five seed at nine and nine. New Regal is a three seed at 11 and seven. I could see a 500 team move it on into the district real easily. Yeah with that. Well, Arlington, the four seed, and one of the teams that mm -hmm. we, we talk about some on, you, know, you mentioned Logan Spire a little while ago, a really right. good player for them. They're eight and ten and got the fourth spot on the bracket. You know, the, clearly record-wise, the best team in this, this uh, district is Old Fort. They're 16 and two. So we'll just have to see how that comes out. Let's move on then to the other division four district, the Elida district. The sectionals played at Van Wert and Ottawa Glandorf. Delphi St. John's got the number one seed, Crestview, the number two seed, Miller City, number three, and Pandora Gilboa, number four. These are almost all local teams that we've seen on our broadcast this year. What do you see coming out of this? I like Del Delphi St. John's. I mean, they have 6'8 Krieger in the middle, good soft touch, right and left hand. When he has a double team, he's able to dish it out to the three-point shooters, insane worst, um, as well as Will. But keep in mind, Crestview has Etzler. Crestview also beat Delphi St. John's earlier in the year. But then you have Miller City in the three seed, which Miller City beat Crestview 62-60. So a lot of those teams are very equally matched. So you never know who, who's going to win on any given night. That's why you're going to have to take it one game at a time. This could be a very interesting district because there's going to be a lot of rematches, some very recent. For instance, Kaleida and Miller City played not long ago. They could match up in the second round. And, you know, a lot of these teams play in the same league. It's very hard to beat a team twice in a row. I agree with Sean. Anything could happen in this district. Uh, a team with a losing record even could come out of this thing. The analysis is sponsored by Frickers in Van Wert. We're going to take a break and come back with our last segment. Welcome back to the postseason preview shows. Mark Shine, Nick Berkey. Now we're going to move Nick down to the southwestern part and look at some of the brackets that come up there, especially D3. And these are the guys that are the reason we already drew because Southwest starts their tournament week, everybody else, so now everybody has to draw. And if we take a look at it here, we can see Versailles down there, seated number one. And you know, unusual, I think, from we view in the northern part of the state here, you get a good seed in the south, you play. Well, you exactly right. A lot of these teams, these, these top seeds will play the for opening night and, and try to add on that win total and playing time and everything else. And with this matchup out of the state and two district here, I, I, I see Versailles in, in a, not relatively easy, but 
you know, I don't think they have a whole lot of hard time coming up for this firm to get to that get to that district final. Yeah, if, if you look at some of those seeds there, Anna is in the uh, similar bracket down there. Anna's an eight seed. They will play Carlisle. Uh, Anna's had a good year. I think I played well in that Shelby County League. I'd be interested to see how they match up. And waiting up there, the Bethel Bees, they're the number two seed. They're always good. Yeah, I think Anna has a chance to go pretty far. Maybe meet Bethel in that in a couple of games in here. But I think at Bethel, boy, they're just they're playing well. And I, I see them coming out of this district. Okay, let's move on now to the D4 district that will be played at Wapak once this district is finished. It also heads south. That's why it's in the Kettering Regional. And we see Rick right away on the top here. You see Perry at the top and a couple of conference foes in Ridgemont and Hard Northern. And then down the bottom bracket, there's Minster, who we saw last night. Well, I think in that bracket, just that Temple New Knoxville matchup should be a fun one to watch. With Temple's got some plenty of guys that can score the ball. I just I like to see the matchup with Minster. After we did the Minster game last night and see right. them hit 13 threes, I like to see the Minster matchup with Temple as well. But I think Perry's just too much offense um, for for any of those teams to handle. I think Perry moves on. Yeah, we saw Minster shoot the ball very very well last night. If they did that, it can be dangerous with anybody. Let's look at the other part of the bracket that goes in with that. Uh, this bracket will be played at Coldwater and obviously feeds into that Wapak district. And in that bracket, upper upper sort of Valley sets on top of that particular bracket, but they've struggled a little bit recently, has the upper Soda Valley. Uh, they got the winner of St. Henry and Waynesfield, and then we got Aiden New Bream and Fort Recovery down at the bottom, and you kind of like Fort Recovery, don't you? I do. I looked at those teams again in this district, and, and Fort Recovery jumped out at me. They've got size, athleticism, they got some guards that can handle it, and they got some guys that can shoot the ball. I, I like them. Their chances of going ahead and meeting Perry eventually out of this district, although I think USV and St. Henry could certainly make some noise and would, would propose good matchups, would make good matchups with Fort Recovery as well. Yeah. I just like the Indian going on to meet Perry. USV struggled a little bit this weekend with a couple of losses. Say Henry sitting out there in the MAC. That'll be an interesting matchup. Let's move on then to the D4 uh, district uh, down in Piqua. And this again will be uh, a couple of screens we'll show. Here's uh, Jackson Center was the four seed. Fairlawn in there with uh, Nathan Lessig who set the, the scoring record down in the Shelby County League. They play Bradford. Botkins is waiting out there. I'd like to see a Jackson Center Fairlawn matchup again as they play in that same conference. I, I think you will as well. You see Botkins has the eight seed sticks all the way out there as gets the bye. Like we oftentimes see those teams that are seeded higher wanting to play earlier. I just think Fairlawn with their offenses abilities. Jackson Center defends so well and keeps games tight. Um, I see those two teams coming out of this bracket as well. Okay, let's take a look at the other bracket that's down in that particular pick with sectional. We see there's number one, Rushi. Fort Laramie is rested in there. Layman Catholics down there. This is a good matchup. I've seen the Rushi Raiders. I've seen Fort Laramie. If those two match up, that's a really good matchup. And I think you're, up, you're going to see that as well. It's just going to be a Shelby County Athletic League matchup here all the way through like it was in the top bracket. Um, Houston again with that 12 seed, with the, the, again, the, the team's playing early. But uh, I certainly see Rushi and Fort Laramie coming out together out of this thing and, and going on for that uh, win in that district. Riverside got the upper Soda Valley this week in an upset. That'll be kind of an interesting thing how that went as well. Well, Nick, we've kind of gone through all the brackets. We've looked at them now. I have one first round matchup I'm really interested in seeing, and that's Shawnee and Kenton from the Western Buckeye League. Kenton is a team that can flat out score with anybody. They got three or four guys that can hang 20 on you anytime. Shawnee, of course, has been up and down, and they've struggled a little bit lately with some injuries inside. I think that first round matchup and then the game against Upper Soda Valley, Upper Sandusky down the road is a really, really good matchup. I, that, for all the first round matchup, that's the one I like. I know you've got one a little bit farther down the road you want to look well, at. I agree with you. Well, that's going to be an interesting matchup. I like that. Maybe down the road to see for sales. I'm hoping it comes out of that out of that Southwest District, and you know they've got Summit Country Day on the schedule, perhaps down the road, and even Roger Bacon, uh, two teams that I think they can match up with, and, and potentially I think of those three teams, one of those guys going to state. That finishes it up for Nick and I. Let's send it over to Mark and Sean and see how they want to look at the tournament as they go through things. All right, a matchup I'm really looking forward to is potentially Liberty Benton and Van Buren. They each got to win a game to get to that. But Mark and I were able to call that regular season game along with Jerry Snodgrass, and it was a great game. Anthony Master Lasco set a scoring record. He had 46 that night. It went to overtime. There was drama. There was great plays. A lot of athletes on the floor. That could be a really good district semifinal. Hey, Sean, who do you think is going to go even further, maybe all the way? I'm going to go with Delphi St. John's. They match up very well with their... Um, district that they have moving on. I look for them to get advanced in their di moving on to the regional. I look for them to beat Crestview or uh, Miller City. Um, I'm sure Delphi St. John's wants to have a rematch with Crestview to avenge that loss yeah. before. Um, so really that team coming in from the Napoleon district will face the winner of this district that St. John's is coming out of. So I see them sitting very well in this and district. Krieger's getting better and better mm -hmm. as the season goes on. 
All right. Hey, we want to thank Frickers and Van Wert and all of our sponsors for helping us make this possible. Thanks to Sean Boley and Nick Bertke for joining Mark and I. Hey, we'll see you Tuesday for the next A Closer Look with Mark and Mark. So long, everyone. <laughs>